Hey guys, this is Mr. Geis for Algebra Unit 8.1, 8.2 Review. Remember to show all your work. All right, first part says to rewrite each quadratic equation from standard form to vertex form by completing the square. Then identify its vertex. Okay, so these were the new notes that we just talked about uh, during 8.2. The first thing that we want to do is to identify what A, B, and C are. So we got A is 1, B is negative 6, and C is 16. Let's zoom in so you guys can really see this. Okay. All right. So the first thing that they asked us to do was to rewrite it. So it's Y equals x squared minus 6x and then they said to take that plus 16 and move it off to the side okay and now we're going to add two things to it like add two things well what do we have to do there that's where we do b uh, divided by 2 squared okay so that's why we identify that b is negative 6. So we're going to take negative 6 divided by 2 and then square it. OK, so what do you get? Well, negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. And then negative 3 squared is 9. So that means I'm going to add a 9 and then subtract a 9. And then we treat these two things separately. Okay. Now the x squared minus 6x plus 9, that's what we factor. Okay. You're looking for numbers that multiply to get to 9 and add to get to negative 6. Okay. So if you need to write down the factors 1 and 9, 3 and 3, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be 3 and 3. The only thing is they both have to be, that's right, negative. Okay, so then it works for both cases. So we get y equals x minus 3 times x minus 3. And then now we take care of this part right here. Okay, so 16 minus 9 gives us? Yeah, isn't that positive 7? Okay, and then the last thing is we're going to rewrite it. We, instead of writing x minus 3 times x minus 3, we're going to rewrite that to x minus 3 squared. Okay? So we get y equals x minus 3 squared plus 7. So there's our equation. And now the last thing they want is the vertex. So when we're finding the vertex, we take the opposite, and then that stays the same. So the opposite of negative 3 is positive 3, and then the 7 stays the same. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Slide on over. So A, B, and C. A is 1, B is 14, and C is 39. So the first step we do is we rewrite it, the x squared plus 14x, and then we move the C off to the other side. We're doing the B divided by 2 squared, so that's 14 divided by 2 squared. 14 divided by 2 is 7, and then 7 squared is 49. Okay, so we're going to add 49 and then subtract 49. All right, so let's go ahead and factor. We're looking for numbers that multiply to get to 49 and add to get to 14. Do you guys know what they are? It's 7 and 7. 
remember, we should be getting the same number here. Now, if you want to, Ms. Kranza was saying this is a step that you could skip right there because you could just take that. If you know it's x plus 7, you can just go x plus 7 squared. Okay, that's completely fine. This part, though, you can't skip. 39 minus 49 is negative 10. Okay, and then we get y equals x plus 7 squared minus 10. So the vertex would be, take the opposite of 7, which is negative 7, and then the negative 10 stays the same. All right, let's move down to the next one. For this next part, it says to identify the specified parts of the parabola. Okay, so the first thing we're looking at is the vertex. And remember that the vertex is this low, either the lowest or the highest point on the graph. So that's the lowest point because it's opening up. And then that point is 1, 3. Okay, the next one, the axis of symmetry. Remember the axis of symmetry is this imaginary line that comes straight through the vertex. And whatever the x is, your x value, that's what it equals. Okay. Whoa. What's going on here? There you go. All right. The y-intercept, anywhere the graph crosses the y-axis, which is right there, and that would be the point 0, 4. And then the last one, the x-intercepts, is anywhere where the graph crosses the x-axis. And does it cross anywhere? No. So if it doesn't cross anywhere, we would say none. And that's it. So why don't you guys try number four on your own? Go ahead and pause the video and good luck. Okay, so the first thing was the vertex, the lowest point of this graph, and, uh, one negative four. Axis of symmetry, it's whatever your x value is in the vertex, so x equals 1. It's not always going to be x equals 1, guys. The y-intercept, 0, negative 3. And then our x-intercepts, we had 2, negative 1, and 3. All right. Now, looking at the next question, they're asking us, or they're giving us information and they want us to graph it, okay? So the first thing that we have to do is we have to make sure that it opens up, which means it's gonna be the happy face. Our vertex is at negative five, zero, and we need to make sure that it has one x-intercept, okay? So at negative five, zero, well, guess what? That's my x-intercept. So now the only thing I have to do is just make sure that it goes up. Okay, now yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine. Yours could have been like super skinny. That would have been okay. It could have been uh, wider if you wanted to. It doesn't matter. Okay, so number six. We want to make sure it opens down. So that's going to be like the frowny face. The vertex is at 4.3. And then it has two x-intercepts. So I'm going to go to 4, 3. There's my point. And I want to make sure it has two x-intercepts, OK? So there's one right there. And that's going to be my other one. Now, it's not asking us for the x-intercepts. It's just saying make sure that it has two. OK? I graphed mine that way. I made sure that they were there. All right, let's go ahead and flip it over. All right, so here we have to graph and complete the table of values. 
So the first thing I need to know, is this in standard form or is this in vertex form? Remember, it's, yeah, this is in standard form because it's y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So I need to know what a, b, and c are. My a is negative 1, my b is 2, and then c is negative 3. So when we are graphing this, the first thing we need is the vertex. And we use x equals the opposite of b over 2a. And then we're going to plug that in. OK? So x equals the opposite of b. So that's going to be negative 2 all over 2 times negative 1. The negative 2 stays on top. And then on the bottom, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And then when I reduce that, I get a positive 1. So this value right here, oh, what's going on? Sorry, that value of the negative 1, now that it's like three different colors, let's go ahead and fix that. OK, so my 1 right there, that's going to tell me what this number is right here. So my 1 goes right here. And now I go two numbers below and two numbers higher. OK? Now, the easiest way to get those points is to go into your graphing calculator and just type that equation in, the negative x squared plus 2x minus 3. Hit second table, and then people are like, oh, Mr. Grice, I don't see it. These numbers are really big. Yes, they will be until you're in the right area for x, okay? So now that I'm in the right area, I can see that at 1, my answer is at negative 2, 0, negative 3, negative 1, negative 6. OK. So that was negative 6, negative 3, right? And negative 2. OK. And then those numbers end up just repeating. Now, if you don't have a calculator, what you are doing is you're going y equals negative x squared plus 2 times x minus 3. And you are plugging all of those points in. OK? I'm going to do 0 because it's the easiest. Uh, negative 0 squared, 0. 2 times 0, 0. And then we're left with y equals negative 3. And guess what? Yeah, that's what we got right there. OK? So. Now that we've got all that information, all we have to do is graph. So at 1, I'm at negative 2. At 0, I'm at negative 3. And at 2, I'm at negative 3. And then at negative 1, we're at negative 6. And at 3, we're at negative 6. You can kind of see how the graph kind of is symmetrical. And that's because of that axis of symmetry that I just drew in there, OK? And then we're going to draw the graph and make sure that it's nice and curved. All right. Are there any x-intercepts? Does our graph cross the x-axis right here? No, it doesn't. So since it doesn't, we would just say that there are not one, none. Okay, let's look at number eight. So first thing, is this in standard form or vertex form? Yeah, it's in vertex form because it's got the parentheses and it's squared. So right away, I need to steal the vertex. So when I'm looking at the vertex, we take the opposite, and this guy stays the same. OK, so I know that we're at negative 3, 6, right? Let me double check. That's negative 3, negative 6. OK, so negative 3, negative 6. And then I go two numbers above or below, and then two numbers higher. And to get those answers, OK, we can either 
plug in again the y equals x plus 3 squared minus 6. You could plug values in right here. That's completely okay. However, let's work smarter, not harder. Plug it in your calculator. Okay. We got x plus 3 uh, squared minus 6. Okay. And then I'm going back. And if you see, look, negative 3. Our answer was negative 6, just like we said. Okay, and then we've got negative 5, negative 2. Here's our other points. So negative 5, negative 2, and then negative 5, negative 2. Just remember, guys, the vertex is the most important part. Okay? So let's go ahead and graph. At negative 3, we're at negative 6 down here. Okay, and then negative 1, negative 2, and then negative 5, negative 2. Okay, so there's my graph. I like to draw my little axis of symmetry to make sure that my cut or my graph can be cut in half and they're like mirror images of itself. And then the next part is where are the x intercepts? Now, those are somewhere in between. They don't come out to be perfect points. So when they're not perfect points, remember we need to, yeah, because we're approximating, okay? Now I know that y is going to be 0. And then our first one, it's in between negative 5 and negative 6. So I'm just going to say that's negative 5.5. And then our other one is in between negative 1 and 0. So that's going to be negative 0 0.5. Okay, and remember, you're just estimating. You're approximating. That's what those squigglies are for. Okay. Number nine, standard or vertex? Yeah, this is in vertex form, okay? So what I want you guys to do is see if you can do this one on your own. Remember, find the vertex and then graph all your other points, okay? Pause the video and good luck. Okay, there's my graph. The vertex was negative 5, 4. Remember, you take the opposite of what's inside, and then um, your other number stays the same. And the last thing we have to do is our x-intercepts, and it was nice because this one came out perfect. So our two intercepts were, uh, let's see, negative 7, 0, and negative 3, 0. All right, last one. Once again, standard or vertex, this one is. Yeah, this is in standard form. So when it's standard form, we want to know what A, B, and C are. So A is 1, B is negative 6, and C is 11. So to find your vertex, remember, we got to do the opposite of B over 2A. So go ahead and plug that in. We'll check to make sure you're using the right points, and then go ahead and graph, okay? So pause the video, and good luck. Okay, so when I plugged that in, I got three. So you should have used those points, and then go ahead and either plug it in to your calculator, or remember, you have to plug each one in individually to the equation. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and good luck. Okay, so that's what you should have gotten. One, six, two, three, three, two, four, three, five, six. And then, are there any x and y intercepts? Or, sorry, x intercepts. 
because our graph opens up and it's above the x-axis. Okay. Well, guys, that's it for Algebra Unit 8.1, 8.2 Review. Remember, if you have any questions, you can come see Ms. Carranza or myself. Otherwise, this is Mr. Grace signing off. Thanks for watching.